DC versus Marvel. It's a battle as old as Star Wars versus Star Trek or Ballistic X versus Sever. Today, we'll be pitting the strongest heroes from each side's films against each other, treating their movies like they're real video evidence, making physicists study the clips to get hard numbers on their speed and strength, then having them compete in a challenge of our own design to settle which team is the most powerful. This is Power Levels. Our competitors are a who's who of OP protagonists. From the worlds of DC, Superman, and Wonder Woman. And from the MCU, Captain Marvel and Thor. For our challenges, we'll have to relay race around the Earth, see who could take the full force of a star, and finally face off in a good old fashioned tug of war. Most points at the end of all three is crowned the most powerful. Ready? Let's go. We'll start with a quick race around the world. Each character will circle Earth's 25,000 mile equator before tagging in their partner to do the same. Fastest total time wins. To calculate their top speed, we'll analyze objects in the background of their fastest clips. By estimating the object's size, we can measure how much distance each hero can cover in a given time and get their velocity. Here we can see Superman being chased down by an ICBM in Batman v Superman, giving him a speed of at least 10,800 miles per hour. Wonder Woman can deflect bullets shot from an AR-15 in this scene from Justice League. By estimating her shoulder dimensions and how far she moves relative to the bullets, we place her speed at 1,125 miles per hour. Meanwhile, in the Marvelverse, we're not letting Thor use the Bifrost to teleport, but in this shot from his first movie, he physically flies down Asgard's Rainbow Road. We used a few different scenes of people standing on the bridge to get a speed of 573 miles per hour. And at the end of Captain Marvel's first film, she keeps pace with a scroll ship as it jumps to light speed, which means Carol goes flying at 670 million miles per hour. Whoa. As impressive as that is, she's still got a teammate to carry. Thor would take 43 and a half hours to circle the Earth, giving Team Marvel a total of 43 and a half hours plus 0.1 seconds. Thor, get it together, man. We're blowing this. Wonder Woman and Superman finish their laps in 22 and 2.3 hours respectively, giving them a combined time of 24.3 hours and the point for challenge number one. For our next challenge, they'll have to, in the words of the immortal Dinklage, take the full force of a star to measure who can soak up the most punishment. Superman's best hit is when he survives a close range explosion from a modern nuclear bomb. Assuming he absorbs even a 10% fraction of the nuke's total energy, he'll have at least a 100 terajoule energy capacity. For Wonder Woman, it's when she takes a full blast of Doomsday's eye laser for about three seconds. Assuming Doomsday's lasers have the same energy as Superman's, we can look at this scene from the run-up to Zod's murder. Watch as they melt a five-foot steel beam in about 75 milliseconds. This implies Wonder Woman can absorb at least 240 million joules. But now it's Marvel's time to shine. Thor withstands the energy of a neutron star in Avengers Infinity War. We can estimate the total power radiated using the Stefan Boltzmann equation for calculating the power radiated from a heated body, naturally. And we can assume the average size and temperature of visible neutron stars. This gives Thor an energy absorption capacity of at least three times 10 to the 26 joules. That's like getting hit with two nuclear bombs at the same time. And yet, that's nothing compared to his teammate. Accelerating any object with mass to the speed of light takes an infinite amount of energy. So if Captain Marvel can accelerate to light speed, her body can absorb an infinite amount as well, breaking the challenge and possibly the MCU. Marvel absolutely crushes DC in this challenge, tying up the score at one point apiece. Now it's time for a tug of war. In almost all cases, our competitors' biggest feats of strength were using weapons, a no-no in tug of war, or with a pushing or punching motion instead of a pull. So we're gonna make it a little easier on ourselves and assume each hero can push and pull with equal strength. Because give us a break. Check out this shot of Superman punching Doomsday as they fall back to Earth. We'll estimate Doomsday's mass is roughly the same as a small elephant, then measure his change in momentum after he's hit. Superman imparts a 10 million Newton punch, or roughly the thrust of a space shuttle booster engine. For Wonder Woman, she overhead presses a British Mark IV tank that weighs 32 tons. This means she can lift with a force of 284,000 Newtons, or about the same thrust as a 747 engine. Thor's largest feat of physical strength with his own body, no hammers allowed, is when he knocks the Hulk across the arena on Sakaar. Looking at specs online, the Hulk weighs an estimated 1,400 pounds, which means Thor has 111,200 newtons of force at his disposal. For Captain Marvel, almost all her strength scenes involve her energy blasts. Her best show of strength with her body is when she kicks Karath across a room. The average person can punch about 75% as hard as they can kick. 
So 75% of the force exerted here gives us a result of 11,187 newtons. Fun fact, we asked our scientists how hard our heroes could pelvic thrust because we are children. And it turns out an air hump is anywhere from 0.1 to 1% the force of a punch, meaning Superman's hips generate at a minimum twice as much as it takes to break bones and a maximum somewhere around the thrust of an F-22 Raptor engine. Oh my God, Lois, I'm so sorry. Anyway, after adding the totals together, DC crushes Marvel with 10,894,000 newtons to Marvel's paltry 122,387, giving them point number three and the overall win. Uh-oh, I can feel the Marvel fanboy rage from here. Let's see, can we give the MCU one more chance to even up the score? How about we see which team would do the best at knocking a comet off a collision course with Earth? No restrictions on weapons or energy blasts. Cool? Cool. Let's pick a well-known orbiting object like Halley's Comet, and let's say the best time and place to disrupt it would be when it's closest to the sun. The heroes will try to add as much force as possible to knock it off its path and out of the solar system. So once again, we'll look for each character's greatest on-screen feat of strength, but now we can take all their powers into account, not just punches and kicks. For Captain Marvel, her strongest move becomes when she smashes through the Kree warship at the end of her solo outing. Assuming the ship has something like five inch thick steel walls, her max force skyrockets to about four million newtons. But let's stop here for a second. We don't wanna waste your time. It would take billions of joules to push Halley's Comet out of orbit. None of our heroes show off anything close to that power on screen. Even all four of their strongest blows combined wouldn't move it off a collision course. So if one day we find out a comet is heading straight towards the Earth, maybe call, I don't know, Meteor Man? Doesn't matter, we're screwed. And since neither team is strong enough to complete the challenge, the final point goes to no one. You get nothing, you all lose. Good day, sir. Sorry, got carried away there for a sec. Turns out DC is still the overall winner and earns the title of most powerful duo. Congratulations, gods! You beat the MCU everywhere but the box office. If you don't like it, too bad. That's where the data leads us, and the data doesn't care about your feelings. But we care about you. Let us know who you'd like to see square off, and you can see them here in the next episode of Power Levels.